Hello, good morning, and welcome to part two of the podcast all about ley lines, megaliths, and crop circles. This Wednesday, the 5th of June, and we're starting at 8.46, and it's nice and sunny. So, the uh, crop circles, megaliths, and ley lines. We'll start with the ley lines. So it was a Mr. Alfred Watkins who discovered these back in the 1920s. Mr. Watkins is a very interesting character. He was a businessman, he was an antiquarian, he collected antiques, and he was also an amateur archaeologist. And he made the very pertinent observation that there were lines that joined religious sites megaliths and Christian grounds and other grounds throughout Britain and that you could draw them and connect them in straight lines and he wrote a book about this and this was an instant success this resonated with the public at the time and a lot of people decided to bring their assistants along some of it very interesting and some of it sadly not so interesting but nonetheless this started a whole new line of thought in the west the whole concept of ley lines in the east is very old in china and japan and in other parts of asia the chinese and japanese call it century i probably pronounced it wrongly and when people arrange furniture in their houses when they uh arrange their gardens and plant certain things and place a fountain here or there. Everything is done according to the principles of Feng Shui. Now, uh, one archaeologist recently stated that for a ley line uh, to be a real ley line, and I presume he was talking about Western ley lines, there had to be four religious sites along the way, uh, along the ley line. I would beg to differ. I would say that from (coughs) the amount of reading and uh, podcasts that I've been through in the last three weeks, that the common denominators for a ley line are definitely a megalithic site or two, definitely a post-pagan religious site, which means that it will normally be Christian or a branch thereof, and uh, a very good chance that there are natural water sources along the ley line and also very good places from which you can make solar solar and lunar observations and that normally uh, where you have several of these in one place it normally means that there's another ley line crossing it so your energy factor is increased and it is very much about energy and fertility which is why the Japanese, the Chinese and lots of other Asian countries are also into this and this is also why dolmens were created this is a a lovely little nugget that I will get to later on Uh, dolmens actually have a very specific purpose that is the total antithesis of sacrifice and death which is nice to know so just for uh, the record Alfred Watkins was born on January 27th 1855 and died April 25th 1935 at the ripe old age of 80 and uh, His book about ley lines was a worldwide success in the West, which is nice. And for him, it was also nice because for him, he qualified that as a religious revelation. And for him, it was very, very uh, positive, which is is good. So, now, these megaliths are present in North America this and South America and Central America this is not a European monopoly at all excuse me one moment uh, 
um, and many of these are actually covered and haven't been excavated. There was a law that was passed round about the 1900s which forbade this on the grounds that these were religious sites and they mustn't be desecrated. Well, actually, they might be religious sites, but they certainly weren't burial grounds. They were uh, dolmens, they were standing stones, and they did have very similar functions to the functions that we're going to get into today. Now, <coughs> these ley lines actually connect with all the major monuments megalithic worldwide. They also connect with the pyramids in Giza, the pyramids in Central America and the pyramids in South America and also some underwater structures as well. So we're going back at least 14,000 years and I'm going to stick my neck out <coughs> and actually say it's highly likely 26,000 years just based on my research and my gut feeling. So we'll stick with 14,000 because that's where everybody's going at the moment, but I'm sure we're going to find out later on that it's more like 26. So <clears throat> these ley lines existed, they're natural, before we set foot on the planet. Dinosaurs were walking across them, you probably didn't know it, Right, they weren't lit up with neon signs, careful, lay line, you know, do not trespass. Uh, <laughs> so they're part of a geomagnetic structure. And this geomagnetic structure not only is on the surface, it goes underneath the surface in several layers and above us in the atmosphere as well, which then gets onto energy grids which also actually connects with the geometry that links the sites. So it is actually all connected. It's just a different set of mathematics, which is why I insisted in part one on the Monk Code and that uh, you, the viewer, had notions of how he arrived at that conclusion and the maths that he used and how this validates the ley lines and the actual position of all these structures, the megalithic monuments, the standing stones, the pyramids, the enormous hill forts and the mounds, all these are connected via this mathematics which creates then this very sacred geometry. So the Sphinx has, the Sphinx in Giza actually has a parent Sphinx, which is about 15 times larger than the actual Sphinx in Giza. And it can be seen, and if you've seen uh, the presentation by Karl Monk, then you will know what I'm talking about. And that's very interesting to note. You also note also that uh, the monuments that he talks about are very large as well, both in the States and in Mexico and elsewhere, that you can't miss them, right? And they're all connected via this geometry. So we have the fact that these lines are above and below the surface. And <coughs> we have all these, these glyphs, which we find in the Orkneys, we find them in the Shetlands, we find them in the West Country, uh, we find them in Ireland, we find them in Europe, and everyone says, oh, what a shame that uh, they didn't actually have a written record. Well, during my research, I found out that actually there was a written record. There was actually a Druid library not far from Karnak, and speaking of Karnak, uh, there's a really, really good uh, presentation by a gentleman called Howard Crowhurst on how he connects Karnak in Brittany to Karnak in Giza and Karnak elsewhere using geometry that is not at all far from the geometry of Karl Monk. So anyway, there was 
a library, a Druid library, and guess who burnt it down? Just as he burnt down the library in Alexandria, which he didn't burn all of the one in Alexandria, but he burnt all the one in, in Karnak, the Druid uh, library, and that was Caesar on his uh, conquest of Gaul and on his way to conquer Britain. But there was a written record. So the Druids were not, as they had been portrayed, full of hocus pocus and uh, no written records and all the rest of it. And just for the record, uh, Caesar in his journals, where he mainly promotes himself, he actually does uh, mention his great admiration for the leadership and the inspiration that the Druids give the people that they represent. So that is well worth noting. So these ley lines have a definite measurable effect on the yields of crops, just as further to the crop circles you also find an increase in yield of the crops. Now why do the crop circles come in again? They come in again because A, they are wonderful expressions geometric expressions of the mathematics used to situate all these sites all over the world and occasionally the authors of these crop circles will reply to a special request though I'd really like a Mandelbrot set someone, some researcher, some well-known scientist said en passant in a pub down in the West Country well two days later he got the crop circle of the Mandelbrot set but otherwise, the crop circles tell us the mathematics required to actually situate the geometric and geological and geophysical position of the sacred sites, whether they're dolmens, pyramids, or whatever. Right? They also occasionally give us 2D models, which we can expand into 3D, of machines which we could manufacture and there's a whole presentation on that as well. Now in the description here I have listed a whole load of research on this and obviously I put the very best ones first and the very last entrance is a whole mix of a hundred uh, presentations that go from the sublime to the ridiculous but the ones that I have actually cited do describe exactly their speciality and I must really congratulate uh, Howard Crowhurst on his work at Karnak and how that links to uh, Stonehenge and also Karnak in Giza. Okay, so the glyphs and the symbols, as we said previously, there are 32 that are worldwide and then we have glyphs and symbols that are specific to each continent. So if you want to turbocharge your seeds, you can, there are two ways. The first thing to do is throw out GMOs, right? That is just sheer poison and sabotage. Genetically modified organisms. It's utter rubbish. So, so long as you don't use PVC or stainless steel, you make yourself a pyramid, you align it either according to your known ley lines or your compass points, and you put your seeds in there, and that will turbocharge them in 24 hours or less. Or you go to your local dolmen, which are two big boulders with one on top, you put your seeds in there for 24 hours and you will turbocharge your seeds. All plants confused. This has been tested worldwide. So the dolmens have nothing to do with human sacrifice, they have nothing to do with uh, death, they, they are not funeral places at all. They are your turbocharging centers for your seeds before you plant them. So this is highly pro-survival, which does explain why you would actually go to all the trouble of moving such huge pieces of stone, such huge distances, putting them in such a precise area. It's not so you can then go kill the goat or the, the sheep or the chicken and dance around the fire, right? It's to do something with a practical purpose for the benefit of the whole community. Right. So, glad we got that. That is the nugget. Now, to give you an idea of how, what a wonderful sense of humour the architects of 
<laughs> these wonderful sites and wonderful crop circles are. So in 1999, just in Britain alone, we had a bumper harvest of crop circles, 150, which is a world record. So they were celebrating the new millennia with us their way and saying, would you please look at the maths? Would you please change your point of view? Because crop circles are all about points of view, where you put your meridian, right? Is it at Greenwich? Is it at Giza? You can even put your meridian in the Orkney Islands and you will get a very, very good set of grid references to visit a lot of the major standing stones and circles and dolmens in the British Isles, which also connects with Stonehenge using the monk code, right? So that is, I think, everything. Oh yes, um, in the description I also put uh, Builders of Ancient Monuments 1 and 2 because uh, they've done some very interesting research there. And there are also the Barabar Caves, which are fascinating because they're not actually huge. They are big, but they're hidden inside these, these cliffs. And the stonework, the accuracy down to microns, the ones that are finished, because there are some unfinished ones, is absolutely brilliant. And it's all about sound waves and vibrations. And once again, was were these caves used to turbocharge seeds or to heal people? Because in many cases, the pyramids were also constructed, not the main ones, not the one, the big ones of Giza, but other pyramids in Egypt, about which there are between 89 and 90 something, nearly another 100, are specifically designed with beds on the inside, stone beds, where you go there to be healed as are certain of the sites on the ley lines. So once again, the ley lines are just about religious sites and it's very practical stuff like turbocharging your seeds and also healing people. There are special uh, sites that are made for healing. So, I'm just checking my notes so I haven't missed anything here. Yeah, all these monuments, all these stones, dolmens, if you know the code, they are signposts and all you have to do is get your code out and then you know that you're going to turn left, carry on for X amount and you will get to the next one and so on. And you can do the whole tour of Ireland with that. You can do the whole tour of the British Isles, including Scotland and Wales. They're all connected. So this goes back a very, very long way. And I really do regret that the library, the Druid Library was burnt because he would have had everything spelled out for us very clearly had we been able to keep that. Okay. Now, as for the pyramids and the dolmens and the seed experiments, even under the Soviet regime, they did these experiments and they absolutely confirmed that these do turbocharge the seeds. And also they confirm that it has, the pyramids do have an excellent effect on human behavior and human health. And what they did with their prisons, their gulags, was they actually <coughs> had granite specially cut to line the, the interior of the cells, but prior to shipping the granite to the cells for the cells to be lined, which the prisoners did themselves, I might add, they left the granite lining, these plates, these plucks of, of granite like you would have buy tiles, right, to tile your bathroom or your kitchen, right? So they would literally have little piles in the pyramid for 48 hours, take them out, ship them off to the gulag, the guys would stick them up on the walls and the ceiling and what have you, the floors, and literally within weeks, the, the statistics on violence went down and stayed down. Well worth noting. So there's a lot to this, and this is all scientifically recorded. Now you can't get results like that from Big Pharma, or any farmer 
this is all natural energy that's God given and was built into the system all we have to do is tune in and use it and I can really understand why Mr. Watkins did feel that it was a spiritual revelation when I discover things like turbocharging seeds and ameliorating human comportment to such an extent that violence decreases substantially and durably and measurably and on that very positive note, I am now terminating this podcast and sincerely hope you like it. There's lots and lots of references in the description. Please do enjoy looking at those. Take your time. Right. But uh, this is a huge subject. I've spent hours and hours on it. I've condensed it down to under 22 minutes, which is a major achievement. And I've just put the really main points there because... I could go on and on, I could show you lots of pretty pictures, but I've actually got a video in the description where it's nothing but pretty pictures, whether it's the dolmens, whether it's the pyramids, or whether it's the crop circles. Um, you've got everything you need to really enjoy the subject. Thank you very much indeed, and I look forward to seeing you soon. I must always say this, because I keep forgetting. Uh, to support my channel, please like, share, comment, please subscribe, and if you'd like to make a donation for equipment and travel, then it is PayPal, and the link is in the description, and thank you once again for your fidelity. Thank you. Have a great day.